Okay, I know I'm already live. It always happens to me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see if anyone jumps on. I'm just gonna start talking basically. And um, if you guys have questions, you can ask in the chat box. If you um, don't have a YouTube, you can't really ask questions. So I'm not here to spend hours and hours talking. I'm just simply going to share my experience with taxes and the fact that um, my tax person now, I can tell you as of today, is two years in a row of having this person and they are like, would you please tell other people how to do their, their paperwork? So that's really all I'm talking about, um, but I can answer questions about, um, some questions about DBA, um, seller's permits, stuff like that. Um, getting a business license, what's the difference? Do I have to pay sales tax? Do I have to, um, you know, do I have to do all these things basically just to have a business? And I find it like really sad that people feel like they have to do all these, like jump through all these hoops when really it's not necessary from when it begins. You wanna do everything right, I've been there. You wanna make sure like, oh, I'm not, I'm not lying, I'm not doing anything wrong. But as long as you are doing the right steps and being uh, proactive about reaching out to an accountant, kind of explaining your business and saying, hey, you know, um, I don't really know what I'm doing, I wanna make sure, and they're gonna say to you, well, have you sold yet before? And you're gonna say, um, I'm just starting. And they're gonna say, come back when you're making X amount of money in sales and then come back and we'll talk. Um, seller's permits are getting more and more required at um, events. If an event asks for it, it's hard to get around. If you go to an event that doesn't ask for it, doesn't state that you need one, I say just go and the odds of your city showing up to that specific event, like a city worker going to probably a weekend event is so unlikely. I do shows so often, I've done shows for years and years and years, and um, I've only been asked once, and it was at a convention in Anaheim, and they came up to my booth, and they're like, do you have a seller's permit? Uh, I can, tell you not a lot of the people are paying attention or care because they picked up my seller's permit which was technically for face painting which was wrong not me yes me okay i was wrong but it was wrong of them to have me get a seller's permit because face painting is not tangible what does that mean and again i'm talking like nobody knows what i'm talking about tonight so if you're like i know what the word tangible means just bear with me because there are people I was like 19 when I started. I had no idea what that word meant. I was like, what's tangible mean? I grew up on a farm and I can't say my teachers were the best, okay? So so tangible means it's something you can hold. I'm selling this lid. That needs to have sales tax. I am selling this item that's virtual and I'm going to do a workshop that's virtual and throw it at you guys. Um, you can't catch it, you can't hold it. There's no sales tax. Sales tax is on an actual item. So if you're doing a service like I was and being told that you need a seller's permit, which yes, I paid my sales tax on three years, three, before someone said, why do you have a seller's permit? And I said, because they told me to get one at the seller's permit place <laughs> um, when I was signing up. And they, they were like, you need sales tax. You need a business license, you need this. Yes, I needed a business license to do business and transactions of money. But I did not need a seller's permit because there's no sales tax. So um, it was a little frustrating that even our own um, state workers have no idea what they're talking about. They don't know your business. You know your business better than they do. They're gonna throw you in a category and you're just gonna be like, sure, how do you, how do you tell a police officer he's going too fast? You can't. How do you tell somebody of something you don't know, like, hey, I don't need one, <laughs> and not have them offended or rude about it? So when somebody finally noticed and they're like, you're a face painter, I think I was 22, they're like, you're a face painter, you don't need a seller's permit. Do you know how much money I spent paying sales tax on stuff that wasn't even supposed to be taxed? So I'm a little bitter, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bitter. I can see your comments right here. I'm definitely going to rewatch this and learn as much as I can. Thank you for doing this. You're so welcome. You guys are great for investing your time into learning something from someone that comes from the exact same background as you guys, okay? I'm not a tax prep person. I don't get paid to do my taxes, okay? If anything, I pay somebody else to do it. 
but I can tell you how to prep your taxes very easily, very cleanly, give them exactly what they need in the most simplest form. And I'm just asking you guys to grab a paper and a pen to at least take notes or at least have your computer open so you can take some notes because I don't have a lot of visuals and I'm a visual learner. So I'll show you a couple things visually, but to be quite honest, I can just say it and I think you'll figure it out. Um, hi to Myra, thank you so much. You need a whole day workshop from me. Well, I did do a taxes um, and business prep um, like getting your business started workshop that you can purchase on my shop for like $10, maybe they're $15 now. Um, that one is intense because I can talk a lot, but I think it's really important information and a lot of the stuff that like you think you need that you don't need. So if you have any questions about sole proprietor, DBA, LLC, um, um, business license, seller's permit, sales tax, I got you, but I might not know everything about your state um, I'm gonna tell you things that I cannot vouch that that's the way to do it. All I know is I've been doing my taxes forever and I know what I've been told and I will not mention who my tax prep people are just in case, you know, they give you one of these, like nobody's looking and they're just like, you know, like there's things that I've been told over time where they're like, I see you're a small business and you're being treated just like a large business. You're being treated like the millionaire that I deal with you're making barely any of that and yet you're treated the exact same, you pay the exact same. It's it's really not fair, right? It sucks. But I also don't want to talk poorly on taxes and have them come find this video. So <laughs> we're just gonna call this, um, you know, the, the, the small business, uh, what did I call it? The small business paperwork workshop and how to keep up. So we're talking about getting things together to go into your accountant and hand them their stuff. Are you ready? You got paper and pen. You already did it. I've said it. I've, I've been saying it. Okay. I don't have Excel. I've never owned Excel. I've never downloaded Excel. I have Google Docs. Some people are so hardcore in Excel that Google Docs doesn't do it for them or they can't figure something out. Me, I'm a Google Docs girl. Okay. So it's free. It's part of what I pay or what I get with my Gmail. Why would I download something and pay more? As a small business, I got to be smart about this. So if you have Excel, yay. And if you don't have Excel, Google Docs. If you don't know where Google Docs is, again, I'm gonna talk to you like you have no idea what I'm talking about. Gmail, get a Gmail if you can. If you have Yahoo, you have all these things, that's great. Get a Gmail because you get this extra perk. Maybe Yahoo has something now, I don't know. I don't keep up anymore. Um, you go into the drive, which is a triangle, and you click on it. You go to new spreadsheet. It's all there. If you don't know how to do it, you can literally look it up on YouTube on all those. I'm not here to tell you how to do that. I'm here to tell you how to keep track of things. Okay, you have all these amazing little tabs you can keep adding. One of the tabs I have is 2021 receipts or receipts. You can do whatever year you're filing for, okay? Receipts is one tab. This is gonna sound generic, but by the time I start telling you how to make it look clean and pretty and keep up with it, you're gonna be like, I'm really glad I listened because I know how to use Google Docs and I don't really care about the stuff she's saying. I already do that. This is important for people that are just starting as well that have no idea how to do this. So again, hear it from both sides. So you have your receipts tab on your Google Docs. You make a tab for um, your other places you get income. So let me tell you what mine are. I have a subscription page I make sales on. Think of everywhere you collect money from people. I have a subscription page. I have a Shopify page, which is my online store. I have a PayPal to take money through that online store. So I technically, like they're grouped, but I still wanna, I get a 1099K from them and we'll talk about 1099K, so don't worry. Um, Pop Shop Live is the new live streaming selling. So I have four different incomes. And just recently, I didn't know it got added, tips have been an option on Shopify for me where someone can leave me a tip. So those are five places I receive income. So you want to use green for all the money you get in. Okay, those are my colors. Red is deductions, green is income. So money going out, money coming in. Where are you getting your money from? And stop and think about it because you're gonna be like, wait, I have a Venmo business. That's new, I just did that wait a minute, I get money through blah, blah, blah. Like think of every source, events. Um, have there been events you do where you don't use credit card? 
you're gonna get tax people that say, I only want what I can see on paper. Don't talk about other stuff. I just wanna see what I can see on paper. It depends on your accountant, how old school they are, how new they are. I've had them all across the board. Nobody's telling me to be shady, but they're like, I can only prove what I can physically see as a fact. So if it's cash, yes, you're supposed to report it. So that's what I'm gonna tell you. You're supposed to report it. That's all I'm gonna say. That's what I've been told. It's up to you. You make that choice. Um, they can't track it. If you if you get a dollar bill and it flies away in the wind, do you claim it? It's not really something that physically is logged. So that's up to you. You choose what you wanna do. Maybe your accountant's like, I need to know all the cash you made. Depends on your accountant. So just remember, they're people too. They run their businesses differently. That's why you do your research and look at how long they've been in business. Um, there's certain words I forget, like there's all the CPA and the this and that, like you ought to make sure they have their licensing in this. Um, so a lot of them will tell you how they're certified and that's really good. Go to the Better Business Bureau, check out their Yelp. And again, how long have they been in business? Because if they're shady and they've only been open for two years, then maybe they haven't been caught in the drama that they're doing, okay? I tell everybody cash is king at events as well. So thank you for saying that. Um, one, it's quick transactions. Two, you're not feed on top of paying taxes, right? So when they use a credit card, there's a fee to you, there's a fee to them. There's all these fees, all these little hidden fees that add up throughout the year. So if you're at an event and you're like, well, I use credit cards because it goes so much faster and I can just use my, my you know, Shopify, my Etsy account, Swiper, whatever it is, just remember, those are all fees. So I always tell people like cash is the best. Like I'm gonna have to pay my taxes on it, but there are no other fees. It's just grab it and go. And you can also get people out faster, all that jazz. So again, I'm speaking as not a tax prep person. You cannot come back to this video and say, she told me not to claim this. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I do. So in your green, you have all the platforms you use to receive money really think about it because there was one I forgot one year. I was like, oh my gosh, I received money through Patreon for the last two months of the year, but I had switched to a new subscription. And since you don't pay for like a year after, I forgot about those two months and I had to go back and redo my taxes because I'm an honest person and I do not want them coming after me. So I'm like, no, even if they do and they audit me and they find something, at least I got as close as I could with honesty that I was doing what I thought was right. And that's that's the best you can do for taxes, is do the best you can. Claim everything you can possibly think of in your head, and that way, if you ever get audited, it would just be a, a genuine mistake. Like, I, I'm, not a I'm not an accountant, I can't afford a bookkeeper, so I'm doing someone else's job that normally gets paid, but I don't get the money to pay that, so I'm doing it all myself, and you guys don't really set up like a guaranteed class I have to take to learn this. So anyone can open a business, anyone can pay taxes, Nobody really cares. They just want you to mess up so they make more money. If you don't know what you're doing, then they make more money. It's it's a great thing for them, right? So um, a lot of people go in right away like, I don't want to be audited. I don't want to. And I'm like, I've been doing business for a really long time and I'm ready. Like if they come after me, I'm, I'm ready. I don't want it. Knock on wood. Don't want it to happen. But I'd rather be so close that if I'm off, it's going to be like, up to a thousand dollars if it even was i'm like i want to know that i'm so close to the dollar that like even if they find something and they're really looking and pulling things that i don't even know um i think they'd find more deductibles than i know <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they'd find things to help me more than things i didn't count for because i account for everything um uh, money coming in and out understand but i have no clue how to calculate the end of year inventory or cost of goods sold yeah, all of that you just said, my tax person never cares about that. You know what they care about? Your dashboard analytics. And if anybody wants to know what that is, every tax person I've gone to, and I've been through quite a few only because during the pandemic, somebody closed down, somebody was helping me with one and her family had a problem during the pandemic and she closed down. I went through like three accountants before I landed this new one. So, um, they say, where's your dashboard printout? It'll tell me sales tax, how much you got gross income, how much your net income was. 
If you're with a good thing like Shopify, I can't vouch for the other ones, but Shopify I've been using, there's an analytics page. Click on it and then drop down and say, last year. It gives you every single thing your tax person needs to know on that page. Never once has it said cost of goods sold, end of the year inventory, never. Never, I'm not saying you don't need it. I'm just saying that whatever that page is that they ask for every time, I'm like, there it is. But on my subscription page, it's in a different country. So if that subscription people that started the company and I'm doing a subscription, they don't care about taxes. They don't care about anything in the US because they're not based here. So unlike Etsy, who's like, we're gonna pull your sales tax, we'll, we'll report it for you. These guys aren't doing that. Shopify doesn't do my sales tax for me. So um, you have to go in and kind of figure out based on your situation, but I can tell you that I've never heard those words before. I know what they, I've heard them, but I've never had somebody say to me, well, what's the end of the year inventory? It's never a question. What's the cost of goods sold? Nope. They, if you want to keep track of your inventory, um, like Shopify has a, how much did it cost you? How much are you selling it for? Um, you can do that so you can figure out your margin of how much you made every time and then you can look at your margins as a printout. I can't keep up with inventory and that and that. And so I'm a bad business person in that sense. Like I don't keep track of my, my inventory and that way I just order as I need. So there's never really inventory or my profit margin on my shop. But again, that's me doing business. That's not necessarily me doing taxes. So I won't even go into that one. But maybe that's something um, that Maybe that's something that you can talk to a tax person and say, how do I do that? Because again, for me, they're just like, give me numbers. All I care about is numbers. And I'm like, okay. Um, also, when you pay a tax person to do it, an accountant, a CPA, whatever, um, they are taking on that they're responsible to if somebody comes after you. So it's kind of their fault for not gathering all the information or making sure they have it. Um, that's why I also have an accountant. It's not a guarantee. It doesn't hold up. They could flee the country. They can be like, I don't know who this girl is and burn all my paperwork. But I keep all the paperwork they give me at the end to be like, no, they did file for me and this is them. I'm in a contract with them when I pay them that they're going to have my back when this goes down. They're going to be a part of it. So when people are like, oh, I just did TurboTax and I guessed, I'm like, uh, if they come after you, you don't have that accountant to back you that knows what's going on or what they asked for or what they're doing. So it is, it's expensive. Welcome to the life of living in the US. It's expensive. Um, it costs me about $400 to file, but I have a lot of 1099s. I have a d bunch of different platforms. So they kind of start you at one base price and everything you add on to it adds like an extra 50 or $100. So they're like, okay, you have your website shop. Okay, now I'm gonna charge you because now you have a subscription page I have to go through. Now you have a PayPal 1099K. Now you have another thing you're adding on to it, Pop Shop Live. That the, Each one of those things is something they have to go down that avenue and ask you questions about it. So that's all time and prep for them. So they are like, it could have been $200, but you've got all these different avenues. You're, so be ready to pay upwards to $500, depending on it. For those of you that are just using like an Etsy or just using one platform and like that's it, you're probably looking at anywhere from 150 to 300. It really depends on the person. They charge all different rates, it's all across the board. But the more you're handing them to do, the more they're gonna raise the price, okay? Um, does Pop Shop have that? I'm trying to find. No, and thank you, Abigail, for asking. That's gonna be another one I'm getting to. Great question. Um, Pop Shop Live and subly.com that I use for subscription. There, there's no analytics page, there's no way. You have to do all the physical work yourself. So I had to go in, download CVS forms. Remember, you're paying your income tax, uh, hopefully in April, hopefully. But remember, you can file extensions. There's a little bit of an interest, but you're, you can file extensions. Don't be afraid. You can break your payments in, or you can break your big total into payments. Let's say you owe $1,000. You can be like, I can do like 100 bucks a month. Doesn't matter. Just know they'll tack on a little bit for interest, okay? It's not crazy. I've had to pay upwards of $5,000 um, on my best years where I was making a lot of profit. Um, and I just said like, I don't have $5,000 to give you. 
um, the pandemic hit right after um, I paid my taxes that year. And I was like, thank goodness I broke it into payments. So don't be afraid of payments. Just know that if you can pay it all at once, you're not gonna get fees. But if you pay it over time, there's gonna be a little bit of interest. I think it's like 20 bucks a month extra. You know, I mean, it adds up when you're paying it every single month. But um, for peace of mind, when the pandemic hit, I was like, I'm so glad I'm not out five grand. I can make my payments and you never know what this world these days, like it, you could literally send off $5,000 and then we'd be shut down again and you'd be asking for the money back and they'd be like, that was for your taxes, you can't have it back now. So, so don't be afraid to do payments if you can spend an extra little bit amount to do interest. And don't be afraid to ask for an extension. You have to fill out a little form. It's super easy. I was afraid to do it. I did it last year and, um, or two years ago, two years ago. And um, it was no big deal. I ended up paying in July. I just filed my extension and then they reach back out to me and say, are you ready yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. They're like, hey, the more you extend it, the more the little interest fees are gonna go. And I'm like, it is what it is. I'm not ready. So don't be afraid to talk to a tax person and say, I need to file an extension. And when you get done and they give you a total, if you owe, if you owe, don't be afraid to say, I need to make payments. It's no big deal. The IRS doesn't care. They know they're getting interest on you when you do that. So um, Pop Shop does not. Pop Shop just says, here's all the money. You get all the money and then your job is to basically do what Shopify does for me. It creates this beautiful landing page for analytics. It's like, here's how much you made all last year. This is how much your net worth was. This is how much was sales tax. This is this. Sales tax and income tax are two completely different things. So don't combine your sales tax into paying your income tax. You pay sales tax at a different time. Maybe some of you pay both around the same time, I don't. My sales tax, for some reason, they started me in July and I end in July. So I have to pay basically July through June and then I can do my sales tax again. So I put all my sales tax aside and sales tax is literally you taking money for them and holding it until you're ready to pay it back. Don't touch that money, that is their money. It's like, it's like, hey, here's $10 for your product, also your friend, I owe them five bucks. And you keep taking that $5 for your friend, that's not your money, that's their money. You're just collecting it for them. So always keep track of your sales tax. Go into your Pop Shop Live if you have one. Go into your subscriptions place if you're someone like me where they, they don't keep the sales tax or they don't even charge sales tax with my subscription. So I have to basically work it into my product prices. Um, I know this is all confusing, but trust me, there's people on here that know what I'm talking about and there's other people who are like, wait, this is too much info. I'm gonna get down to the basics of breaking down your receipts and how to present it to your tax person. Um, but let me just get through these few questions real quick. Um, so yeah, uh, with Pop Shop Live, you have to download each month. It'll have the sales tax they collected on Pop Shop Live and you only collect from California. Um, you're supposed to collect sales tax from other places. You're supposed to do this in other states. You're supposed to claim when you buy something from another state and then write it and say, I paid this much in sales tax when I bought from Florida. The number one thing across the board for my tax people is nobody does it. It's so, how would we know? We wouldn't know, how would you know? So again, I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm saying that every time I'm like, when I was buying face painting products from Florida, cause that's the main hub for where I would buy my face painting stuff. Um, they don't charge sales tax in Florida. I, th I believe that they don't have sales tax, but I'm supposed to claim my 7.75% in my city for every time I bought from them. So I was supposed to go and say, here's my receipts. Also, I owe because Florida didn't charge me. I owe sales tax. They're like, it's so, it's something they can't even control. It's based on hope, trust, and pixie dust. Okay, it's based on you hopefully doing the right thing. That's up to you, what you wanna do. So um, the only thing I've been told to worry about is California sales tax, because I'm in California and this is where I should be collecting sales tax. If you have heard otherwise, you do what's best for you. This isn't me telling you this is right or wrong. I'm just saying, I think nobody really knows. <laughs> I've talked to sales tax people, they're like, I think so, and I'm like, great, that sounds real solid. Um, so if they don't know, you don't know, or you get five different stories from different people you call, then nobody knows, okay? But sales tax is the wonky one. 
The one that they really know is income tax. So did you get any 1099s? No, I, I didn't. Pop Shop didn't send me a 1099. The subscription page didn't send me a 1099. So I don't have to pay. No, that's not what that means. You still need to report your income. Any income they wanna know, but talk to a tax person first, go to accountant and say, hey, this year my I added up all my profit. I haven't done my deductibles, like my receipts and all the stuff I paid out. My profit's like $4,000, should I pay? And they'll give you an answer. It's like you go to three different people and kind of weigh them out. It's like when you go to a vet and the vet tells you something, you're like, oh, I don't think that's right. You go to another vet. You don't just really stop on the first vet. Um, so it's up to you. It's up to you to do that research and call around and say, hey, I made about this much, should I file? Some just want your money and they're just gonna be like, yeah, you should file. You only made $1,000, sure, come on in. I'll take your money. Um, get the majority vote and then do what's right for you. Um, the first year I went in, I made $1,500 that year for face painting. It was a part-time job. I was super freaked out. I went to a person to pay the income tax and they were like, that's like nothing. Um, you don't have to come back until this time. You tell me when you're profiting is like $5,000. Then I went to someone else. They gave me around about the same idea, like four to five. And so I was like, I guess I'm under the radar until it's time. So it's it's a really weird situation we're in because we don't know and we're looking for answers. And then when they're not really giving us perfect answers, you're like, whoa, what should I do? So I don't know when you should go in. I've been told many different things. And, and after that first year, I made enough to where I needed it because it became my full income. I needed to go pay my taxes. Um, there was no 1099 for me. I was a, I was um, a sole proprietor. I was my own contractor. So no one was above me to give me a 1099. I just needed to collect money and then pay the taxes on it. But receipts, okay? Print out any 1099s you have. The glorious part about where you guys are in, in this time is 1099s are usually emailed and mailed to you. So if you've moved recently, you're not sure if you have a 1099 and you use things like Etsy, you use things like Shopify, Big Cartel, any of those, I'm almost positive you'll have a 1099 sitting in whatever email you get all your stuff sent to. Today, I went into two different accounts of my Gmail accounts because I used to be under one name. And then when I moved it to the second name, a lot of my old, old, old stuff is still connected to that. So like my PayPal went to my old account because I still use that same account. I just updated my name. So that 1099 went to that email and I searched 1099 in the search bar on my other email, my more recent one, and I got two more of them. And you're gonna get 1099s possibly from places like Stripe, if you've never heard of that. It's a credit card processing company. Um, I wanna say there's one called like WePay, there's Amazon Pay. When you set up your website, you can usually choose what buttons people check out with, what they wanna use as a third party. Um, those companies get a percentage of them using a credit card or using their PayPal to pay. And then they get that fee, but because PayPal's a third party, I'm gonna get a 1099 from PayPal if it's over $600. That is your key word. If you've made $600 or more in income, not talking deductibles, just income, if you've made more than $600, you should have a 1099. So if you're like, wait, what do I do? Um, I didn't get one. Don't be so certain. There are three ways to check. One, did you get one in the mail? Two, did you search your emails? All your emails that you think you could have possibly signed up for these companies for, did you get a 1099 there? And the last place is on the actual page, okay? I go to shopify.com, I sign into my account, and I go to an area, and for Shopify, I will tell you right now, I'm opening it. The word is finances? Okay, uh, analytics, reports. Analytics is reports. Sorry, I know where it is. I just gotta find it. Um, my 1099, no, you know what? My 1099, I did find in my email. So that's how I got to it. I clicked on it, said to review your 1099, click here. I did it and it shot me right to that page on Shopify. I don't think I searched for it. Um, PayPal, 
you go up to the top and it says forms and when you click on it it'll say like 1099 and when you click on it if you made over six hundred dollars in sales you'll have a 1099 waiting for you print it out okay uh, Big Cartel doesn't have one. You'll have to download the CSV form on the orders. There you go. So Maria, thank you so much for sharing that. She's saying that Big Cartel does not have a page that's an analytics page. Um, analytics just means it's giving you all the graph, the charts, the breakdown of pricing, anything like that that you look for. Click on stuff. Don't be afraid to click on different tabs and open different pages and get to know the, the companies you're using, okay? Um, will you save this so we can rewatch? Yep, it's actually already being saved. That's why I love the streaming service. It's already being recorded and uploading as we speak. So as soon as I get done, it takes about maybe like an hour or two to upload and then it's there forever. So yeah, feel free to come back. Um, and then what was I gonna say? So 1099s print them out. Be very aware, like me with Shopify, I have a bit of an issue. Shopify gives me my gross sales, okay? That includes when people pick the PayPal button third party, that's when they pick to pay with a credit card, it doesn't matter, it's all there. And then all of a sudden, I get a 1099 from PayPal, but I'm using PayPal to receive the payments through Shopify, but I got a 1099 from them and them, so isn't that like double saying what I made? Like you're just cutting out the PayPal one and giving me another one. 1099s are reported to the IRS. That is the stuff that is scary and you need to have in your hand when you go to your accountant. If you didn't get a 1099, either you didn't break $600 in sales and maybe you think you did and you didn't, um, which is why it's great to go to those pages and look at analytics and then usually there's a month to date, look at yesterday's sales and then a button that says look at last year and that's usually what I click is I'll look at the, um, last year's and then it gives me the whole this is how much money you made this is how much money went to sales tax this 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 so gross is everything your sales tax your income whatever they paid and you collected that's your gross once they start breaking down like these were your discounts these were your refunds these were this you're going to end up with net sales net sales is after everything gets paid out you ever get a paycheck from your boss and then it's like you made seven thousand dollars a week but we paid your uh retirement we paid your insurance we paid this we pay this and you watch all the numbers just make your your amount go down and you're like i'm so sad <laughs> and you get to the bottom that's how you read your analytics page you start with wow i made that much oh but then after refunds and discounts and shopping shipping codes and your shipping and this all this has been taken out you only ended up with this much. So, I mean, they know what they're looking for. That's why I print out those analytic pages. I'm not on the other website, so I really can't tell you what it is or where to find it, but you can search in YouTube like Big Cartel Analytics page, Big Cartel, how do I do my taxes? Like, how do I find tax forms? Did I get a 1099? Does Big Cartel do a 1099? You guys could not have it any easier having the YouTube search. Um, so many people are doing what I'm doing right now and they've been doing it for all these companies individually. Um, it's pretty phenomenal, it's pretty great. And then there's also landing pages where people are like, yeah, Big Cartel does have 1099s, look for them, here's how you find them. Um, but subscription pages like the one I'm doing, they do nothing for me. All it is is, here's all the money, here you go. And then it's up to me to go, Okay, this was sales tax for California. Don't include that in my income tax. That's sales tax that comes out later. Right now, I'm just focusing on the amount I took in. Okay, so you have your pen and paper, right? Okay, we're gonna go through the tabs again. It was receipts and then anything else you think you need to like separate just to see. But what I do is I do receipts like going to the store and shopping, going to USPS, Grab that receipt. Do not say no to receipts. You need all your receipts because if you get audited, they need proof. Nowadays, you can print out your Chase account, your US bank account. You can print all of your yearly statements out from your bank, whatever bank you have. You can print out your PayPal if you use it to shop for products and buy things for your business. 
that's awesome. It's probably got most of those physical receipts there, but for me, it's easier to grab a receipt and enter it. And then I go through Chase Bank and I look at all my statements on Chase and I go, okay, that one I, I did include. Ooh, this one I must have lost the receipt because how many do you lose? It's not on my Excel spreadsheet. I need to enter it. So write this down on your receipts tab page. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around. Don't worry, this isn't super private information. It's not a big deal, it's just receipts. Okay, this is how I lay out my page, okay? The very basic, you've got supplies for shipping. I've got my different vendors, pirate ship, USPS, cat print, you know, like I go through all these. Okay, then I've got things like donations. Yes, when you donate, it's super important to write down that you donated. Travel expenses, parking, booth fees, supplies, okay? So I'm gonna read to you mine, and you guys can take what you want and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that's a deductible. There's shocking stuff that they don't want you to know, right? You get, you, you'll forget about it. So don't forget about it, write these down and include them, okay? Shipping supplies, that is packaging, that is shipping, that is everything. I like to have everything completely separate. I put my USPS as one. I do pirate ship as one. I use like another party for when I can't use Shopify and I can't make labels, or maybe I don't wanna go through USPS, it's too expensive, I use pirate ship. There's also Shippo. It's not a secret anymore. Everybody knows there's all these like third party shipping places. When I do my subscriptions, I send them out through Pirate Ship. I can't use my online store because it's a separate um, platform. So I need a shipping place. And I really like Pirate Ship. Um, I know Shippo is another good one that people use. So I don't just write shipping supplies and just it's all in one category. It's really hard to see. But when I break them up into little sections, I'm like, I can find them faster that way. When it's one big long line and it, I do it by date, this is why I told you that if I get something happen to me, I can recall the day, the place, and the amount. That is what you need. The date of when you, when you used your card, when you paid cash, when you did PayPal, whatever it is you purchased virtually or in person, the date you did it, the amount it was, and the location or online store that you shopped from. Okay, those are three major factors. This is how I do it. This is not saying that you need to do it this way. This is how I do it and my tax lady loves me. So you wanna get in good? Take, take it from a pro. No, I'm just kidding, okay. So I break shipping into all the different companies, um, but if I do supplies like buying boxes and stuff, I'm going to the same like three people. I just put that in shipping supplies. Pirate Ship is its own company and I wanna to refer to that one quickly so I have all of that. You do not wanna include when you refunded somebody. So you have to be really careful because if you're like, oh, these are all my receipts, well, did you also account for when you maybe like canceled a label, right? You like make a label and you're like, oh shoot, that was the wrong like person that was gonna ship it. I don't want UPS, I want USPS. And you hit delete. If it doesn't show up in your account that the money went back to you, like that can be very confusing and you're basically claiming something that you got refunded and that's not okay. You go buy something at your art supply store, but a week later you take the item back. Did you save the receipt to basically say, never mind, don't count that because I got my money back? These are little things that you have to remember. And how do you remember? You log them within those two weeks. Set up dates for yourself and be like, don't forget to do it. Like, like I'm gonna go into my tips on how I stay happy doing my taxes. It's stressful, but I mean, I leave and I'm like, it is what it is. I mean, if I owe it, I owe it. If I need to claim as much as I can to bring that profit down, because out of this profit, I spent this much money to run my business, now your margin's tinier. And that's why a lot of people like save every receipt. It's because every receipt, yeah, is money out of your pocket throughout the year, but you're lowering that, that margin of profit to deductions. And so 
I'm not telling you to go to the movies and use it as a write-off. That's the worst thing you can do. People did it back in the day. They did it in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. In 2000s, they started saying, we will not allow that unless it's an absolute proof that it helped your business. You can't be like, I went to a Disney movie because I'm creating Disney characters for like a product like in my style and I needed to go for research. It doesn't hold up anymore. They won't even allow it. That's at least what I've heard. I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. But if you are having a meeting and you pay for dinner, you can call that, a, it's a meeting. How do you prove it? You don't, but you don't do it for every dinner. You are selective on how you do it. And for me, honesty. I got done curating a show. I took out all my volunteers for dinner. It's expensive, it costs money. But I know at the end of the year, that amount that I just paid for like seven people to eat can be a write-off. And if they're like, oh, did you really have to go to this nice place and buy them all food? Yes, I did. That's what I do for my volunteers. I pay for a dinner with the money I received from all my vendors. I take them out to a nice dinner to thank them for volunteering for free. It's the least thing I could do. But at least it's not my money, it's my business's money. So remember, if you're a sole proprietor like me and you're an artist, it's your money. Really, at the end of the day, you're not like a big business that just goes, this is business and this is my personal. You end up mushing it together. Trust me, it all just kind of gets confusing. So there's that. Um, if you're really good, you know how to separate business money and personal money. But when you're sole proprietor, you're taking everything as yourself. So it's good to have like a checking and a savings and be like, my savings is my money and my checking is anything business related. Do you know if you absolutely need the receipts or can you have a printout of your bank statement? Bank statement's fine. I say go through your bank statement, account for all those receipts, and then you can chuck the receipts. That's fine. Bank statements are totally okay. It's honestly the exact same thing. Um, and I do know after seven years, I still don't throw them away. I have boxes and boxes of my tax paperwork. Um, Greg's always like, this is from 2012. I think you can let it go now. You can burn it. And I was like... Nope, nope, I'm not doing it. And I believe after seven years, you kind of become, it's its just not necessary anymore, but I still keep it because I'm terrified. Um, <laughs> clearly, I know nothing. But yeah, um, bank statements are great. Just remember, not every receipt is on a bank statement. Some receipts are gonna be cash and you're gonna be like, I just threw away all my receipts. Um, your bank doesn't know about cash payments. Sometimes I go to the store and I just did a huge show and I'm like, I'm gonna buy a bunch of new art supplies. I hand over a $50 bill. I'm gonna get a receipt, but my bank will never know about it because I paid cash. And that's a receipt you wanna keep. So that's why I'm saying, if it's on your bank statement, you can let it go. If it's on your PayPal that maybe you bought something on Amazon and you used your PayPal account to pay, you and you match it and you're like, oh, I already have this, you can let it go but I keep everything, I'm gross. I, even my tax person, the first time I went in with like my tax prep, like this paperwork, I printed out, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't need to know everything. I just need your total amount. So let's put that in the new words, ready? You're itemizing everything. I have my printers, I have who makes my art prints, I have who makes my stickers, I have who makes my magnets as a list. I have, and if they're all the same company, they're obviously in one list. If your sticker person is your magnet person, just make one list. But if you get prints from one place, stickers from another place, and um, canvases from another place, you need to have each of those as a vendor on your list. You need to have a title for them. Okay, so USPS is a title. Um, my sticker mule is a title. Again, I'm naming things that most people use anyway right now. Vista print for business cards, title. Um, I get stuff laser cut, that's a whole new vendor, title. And every time I shop with those people, that goes in that column. Again, date and how much you spent. If it's generic like I buy all my stickers and magnets through sticker mule, I don't need to go sticker mule amount date, sticker mule amount date. I just call it sticker mule and I just do amount and date, two columns. If you're like, shipping supplies and you go to five different places and I'm like, I go to Paper Mart for my shipping supplies, I go to Box Zone for my shipping supplies, I go to Uline for some shipping supplies, I go to Amazon for some shipping supplies, then I just call the title shipping supplies and then I put the name of the place, the amount, the date, however you wanna jumble that, whatever. 
That's the only time I include the vendor's name in every single line. But otherwise, if it's just generic to that one, they get their own column. Okay, here are one. So think of all your vendors that you shop with. Every time there's a new vendor and you look at your tax thing, make a column for them. Is it long? Is it annoying? Yes, but is it easy to fly through and be like, oh, uh, what did I spend on June 26th? Boom, and I organize by date for each column. Every single one is by date. Um, <laughs> you shouldn't hate yourself right now because a lot of people don't know. You think everybody knows how to do taxes. We don't, and I don't even know if my tax person knows what they're doing. I don't know. I just have good faith that they've been in business a long time and they know what they're doing. Okay, donations. If you donate to any companies, it's a write-off, okay? It adds up. If you're sending 25 bucks a month for 12, you know, 12 months, that adds up. Um, so keep your donations in mind. If the person goes, you donated 100 bucks, I really can't write that off. It is what it is. Um, travel expenses. Did you travel anywhere for shows? Did you travel anything work-related? Also, mileage versus gas. Do I keep my gas receipts or do I keep my mileage? Every time I go to somebody, they say mileage. Don't do gas receipts. Again, this is what I've been told. I'm not telling you what to do. Um, gas receipts can get confusing because you maybe you just ran to your friend's house and need to gas really fast. So you keep that receipt. It's going to get confusing. And then you do a show and you want to keep your receipt because you filled up before you went to it. What if your gas tank was already full that week from having to go somewhere and then you do a show on that same tank of gas, it's hard to gauge how much that was. That's why mileage is a guaranteed. And based on your receipts, if you're running to get something, you can get the mileage for somewhere. Like I go to Art Supply Warehouse all the time. So if I have a receipt that I went to Art Supply Warehouse, I take that date and I go, it's seven miles there and seven miles back you will be shocked how quickly your mileage will add up. It's a lot of work, but what am I telling you? I'm setting up dates for us to check in with each other through Zoom. If you have any interest, I will tell you how to get a hold of me to do this. Um, every two weeks, I have allotted, go through my bank statements. Next two weeks, I go through my PayPal statements of money out, and then um, go through my subscription and go through anything that I need to do there once a month. And I also have once a month go through Pop Shop Live to separate my shows from sales tax to how much I really gained that much uh, earned. So once a month is PayPal for me, or sorry, once a month is Pop Shop for me. Once a month, um, and always at the end, obviously, you wanna get through the whole month to know once you're done with your shows, um, I separate my sales tax from the total income. And it's only California, if you're in the state of California doing um, Pop Shop sales. This probably applies to people in states that collect money. Um, Shop or Pop Shop, sorry, they're Shopify, Pop Shop, Subly. They're all like P's and S's. It's hard. Um, <laughs> woo, okay, could have got myself in some trouble there. Um, they are end of the month. I pretty much know like, okay, I'm not doing any more Pop Shop shows. I need to do my, my taxes now. I need to like get all my receipts worked out. Um, so I get a grand total but then I find out how much the sales tax was and deduct that from that month's total. Okay, so remember gross and net. You wanna take the amount you made, subtract your California sales tax, write that number in, maybe make another tab for sales tax and be like, for Pop Shop, this much was pulled for sales tax. I owe that when my time comes to pay sales tax, I owe that. But right now my income for the whole month was the gross amount minus sales tax equals this. That's your number for Pop Shop Live. It's a lot of work. I just spent all my time doing it because they don't have a dashboard. They don't have any way of printing out really quick analytics to see these numbers. You have to create it for them. So there's that. Um, I know this would be another tax thing for you, but I would pay for a monthly subscription to sit with you on these every two weeks on dates. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, maybe I will consider um, some sort of of small fee if it's something more than just the Zoom chat I'm planning where we just meet in the morning, we go over it, we kind of have a little quick group meeting and then I get to my thing, I'm not with you during taxes, you're doing your receipts, you're entering all your stuff, but it's accountability. At the end of the day, it's accountability. How I set mine up and how you set yours up could be completely different, but the more you break things down into blocks and separate everything, the cleaner it is when you go to get all your major totals at the end of the year. Um, so yes, I will consider it, but also, you know, 
I'm sure you guys can do it. I know you guys can. So yeah, go through everything. So travel expenses, parking expenses, still writing stuff down, parking expenses you need to know. If Again, this is for people that are actively doing shows. Some of this will not apply to you. Booth fees that you pay for, virtual fees for virtual shows, um, supplies in general, not shipping supplies, supplies. I had to run and buy envelopes from Target. Um, I had to go to Office Depot and print a copy of my flyer. Um, I had to go to, I'm pulling things from mine. I had to go to Michael's Arts and Crafts and buy a new paintbrush. To me, supplies are anything just random, generic. I had a booth display and I had to go buy a little stand from TJ Maxx. Those for me are just generic like supplies. They're not shipping supplies, they're just supplies to make my business and me run. Okay, so I have a supplies one that's etc. if you will. They're not somebody I go to every single day or every single week. Whereas I go to pirate ship every single month. I do um, like to print my stuff out. So they get their own category, but anything else, your supplies will add up. It'll be a very long list. Mine's like 150 lines worth of things, but I can find them quickly based on date. So I'm like, if someone said, what did you do on December 9th? I can go back and be like, okay, December 9th, I was at the Disney parks. I spent $79.50. Why is that important? Because I actually met with somebody to talk about something we were working on. And that becomes a fee for me that I had to buy food that day. And I paid for both of us. So there's my meeting right there. Um, so like, I, I remember, I remember dates. I remember what I did. I remember how I did it. Don't be afraid to have a, a meeting somewhere special. Don't be afraid to do it. It's going to be out of your pocket. And see, I used to think like, you're spending free money or like you spend the money and they just give it back to you. That's what I used to think. It's not, it's money gone, but you get to use that as a little, let's deduct that from how much I made because I had to have that meeting, $79 off that total. So look at it that way as you're, you got all this profit, how do we make it come down? How much did you spend to get to that profit throughout the year? Food, okay, now be selective. Don't be writing food like crazy, you know, don't be like, oh, I went to McDonald's 19 times in a week, okay? Maybe you went to McDonald's on your way to an event and you needed to buy food because you were starving and you couldn't do it before, you couldn't eat before you left the house. It seems obvious, but there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you can do that? I still meet people that can't believe you can write off food, okay? Shopify, for me, I have to pay monthly fees, I have to pay the shipping fees, I have a lot of fees with them. It's not a bad thing. It's because the more money I made, the more money I had to pay. So I pay up front for, I'm sorry, they cover all my shipping and at the end of the month or every few weeks, whatever it is I have it set up to be, they take out all the shipping that the customer paid me. They go, okay, here's the money. Make all your labels. Okay, now we're gonna take it as a lump sum. We're gonna take $200. That's how much you spent to ship everything for the last two weeks. So there's things like your website fees. Okay, your website, your online stores, what are the fees you pay? What do they deduct from you? Your website, did you get a web designer? Did you have to pay somebody? Do you have Weebly? Do you have WordPress? Write these things down. I just have it as website and then I have Shopify separate because I used a website for a short time so I had it for a little bit and then I got rid of it. Um, are you using MailChimp for newsletters? I'll get back to what you guys are writing, okay? Um, are you doing newsletters? You probably... Don't pay for the free one once you reach a certain amount of supporters on there that sign up. You probably pay per month. Even if it's $9 a month times 12, why wouldn't you claim that? You pay that to run your business, okay? I couldn't reach all my customers without my newsletters. So I pay per month and right now with MailChimp, I'm $9.99, 12, time, 12 months. Um, so I just write $9.99 times 12. If your fees go up, which is happening this year, people are like, sorry, you're, your thing is changing and we're upping the price. Um, yeah, Amazon Prime. If you order things for your company and you're paying for Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime is a cost. Um, so there's all these things you literally have to go through and be like, how do I run my business? And I wrote a big long list the first time I did it and I was like, here's where I spend my money. And I kept that list and one day when I was like, oh, I shop on Amazon to buy like thumbtacks, right? Or something crazy. Amazon wasn't on that list, so I added it to the list. Yeah, I saw it when I was doing my bank receipts or my PayPal receipts, I eventually saw it, 
but it was something I wasn't even considering is an Amazon Prime fee to get free shipping. Um, my subscription charges me to have a subscription page. Um, I download Photoshop, right? We can't really buy it anymore. Now they want you to rent it. I rent Photoshop. It's expensive. It's 50, it was $52.99 for eight months and $20.99 for four months because I did another deal where I paid longer so they, they made my um, payments smaller to lock me in for longer. Adobe Photoshop, do you pay for it? Dropbox, are you paying for a Dropbox type of company? Your phone bill, you need a phone to run a business. The portion your, your, um, your uh, tax people take, some of them will be like, I can't write off your entire phone. If your phone is your, your personal phone and your work phone, I can do a percentage. That's up to them. You, can, you don't really get a say in that. You'll just be like, here's my 100% how much I paid for my phone. But that's like 100%. So if I paid like $3,000 in phone bills, they're going to be like, well, your business is about 40% of that. So we'll take 40% of your $3,000 bill. So I give them full totals when I talk about utility bills. I run everything out of my house. So I include all utilities, um, my electricity, my gas, my water, my trash, um, whatever you get billed for and pay each month, write it down. You'd be surprised. You'd be like, well, I mean, I'm not like really running water to run my business. Uh, you need the bathroom. You need to flush the toilet. You need to wash your hands. Please wash your hands. Um, so I try to remind people like the things you think don't matter, write it. To live, it costs money. Write everything. They don't care. They don't care about you. They want their money and you need, you want to keep your money you worked so hard for. So why not write everything off? You know, get, be honest but write everything and then your people will say like, I can't take all the utilities, okay? We can't be writing off your entire bill for your home. But a portion of your studio and the bathroom are what you're going between throughout the day. Yeah, you go in your kitchen, you probably make a sandwich really quick, you need to wash off the knife. You use these things, consider that your square footage. Find out what the square footage is for your space. You can write off your square footage, okay, per month. How much is it? Mine's like, my last place was like 400 square feet I used. But I also had a garage that we purchased for $100 a month that I could use and rent. So I was 100 bucks plus my 400 square feet. And then my tax person does the math. They figure it all out for me. So there's not much, I have. again, I'm just answering questions. They don't know, they've never been to my house. So you've got to come to the table with all these answers and these numbers. All they want is totals. They're like, how much is this? Okay, great. I mean, they're not gonna fight you on it. They're just going based on your word. So there's no right or wrong answer, but there are things you might miss that you could have gotten. And again, I'm gonna get back to everybody's questions. We're almost to the end of the things I claim that maybe matter to you. Phone bills, your car, do you lease it? Do you rent it? I guess that's the same thing, but you know what I mean. Have you had a rental car? Um, did your car get maintenance? Do you have car insurance? Please have car insurance. Um, all those things matter because you have to drive to go to the store. You gotta drive to the bank. You gotta go get more supplies. You gotta go to that event you're going to. Your car is your second office. That's how I look at it. It's how you get everywhere. If you don't have a car, it's, it is something to consider getting. Even if it's an old car, you buy one outright, um, you can write it off. So I'm like, eh. Do it. Um, utilities, we talked about. I just put all my utilities. I'm like, gas, it was $55 in January. Spectrum, $45 for Wi Fi. Like, I just wrote it all and I'm like, I'm not giving you percentages. This is how much I paid for each of my utilities each month. And they were like, okay, we got a grand total. You already added it for me. Now I'm just going to take a percentage of that. Miscellaneous things you forget that you did and you have no idea, but you know you did it for work. I have a lot of those where I'm just like, I know I ordered this, but I don't remember what exactly the item was. I just don't put it in supplies. I put it in miscellaneous for myself. Okay, so once you've set up all your vendors, all the things you pay out as little things, I challenge you every two weeks, even if you don't talk to me on my Zoom chats before I'm about to start, um, write it down in planners. Have your planner on your table and write down what days you plan on doing it. If you put it off that day, cross it off and move it to the next day. And do that as because you're gonna hate yourself for moving the date. 
keep up with your receipts. You will thank me. I have been spending times where I will spend almost six months doing an entire last year. I will do all these things, okay? But um, at the end of the day, you know, it's better to do every two weeks than try to cram everything and you're gonna panic and you're, you're gonna forget things. It's better to have a clear mind and just play a little catch up game. Um, here's something I suggest. Have someone in your household, a family friend, a friend of yours, if they don't want money, take them to a movie, take them to dinner. It goes so much faster with two people. So I'll have somebody sit with me on my, my receipt days and I'll say, I'll grab it and I'll be like, Chase, or Chase, Art Supply Warehouse, supplies. And they go, okay, we're in the supplies section. Okay, go ahead, Art Supply Warehouse on January 2nd. January 2nd, how much? $10.05 and they repeat $10.05 and that's my system on how they repeat it to me so I know they heard it because how many times do you say 15 and they think you said 50? So I usually say repeat the last number and when they do, I move to the next receipt. That's them just confirming they got it. They don't just say, uh-huh. They go 10.05, great. The next one is going to be food, McDonald's. All right, we're in section food, McDonald's. How many of you have a hard time going like this? $10, uh, wait, I lost my spot. Uh, I can't find it. It's so much easier to just read off a list to somebody or read the receipts to somebody. So I'll, I'll have somebody like do receipts for me and I'll pay them for it. Um, and I pay well based on the hours. Like if they're working like two hours just to input a bunch of receipts for me, this is a great job for your kids, your teenagers. Make sure you double check it though. If you're not sitting in the same room doing that with them, um, it's also a great way for college students to make some extra money. Um, it's just receipts. They, they don't need to know your bank account info. They don't need to know anything. When I do my bank stuff, I have my helper sit on the other side and I read through my statement and I know what I'm looking for. Some stuff is personal, some stuff is for business. So I just read to them. They don't get to see my screen. They don't know how much I make. They don't see my income, my outcome. Eva, I'm single, I live alone, I cannot. And I have a cat and they are not good at typing yet. And I'm like, okay, no worries, I got you. Then you do it yourself. But you know what? Every two weeks will slim down how much you have to do. Eva, what about, what do you feel about, um, you know, QuickBooks. I don't use it, so I can't tell you. I have no idea. Eva, what about those apps where they scan every single thing or you log all your payments that are recurring and you do, great, do it. It works for you, go for it. I have no interest. <laughs> I like to, I'm very old school. I wanna physically type things in and do all of that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to some questions before I lose people here. Okay, um, we have, uh, at least a tip bucket, because you're amazing, thank you. I'm with you, Abigail. Eva, would you make a template of your list there? Yes, of course, I will make a template. Um, I'd pay for Eva's generic list. You don't have to pay for it, it's really generic. Um, which we're still going, we have just a tiny bit more and I'm done talking, I promise. I said I was gonna keep it short, we're already at an hour, so um, I wanna make sure I get everybody's questions. Um, I know you talk about bill, wait, did I miss it? I have no idea I can claim all of that. See, everything, you, they, they do not deserve the things that you guys have to sit here and work so hard for, yet we have to give them money, right? As they say, if it has Caesar's face on it, you return it back to Caesar, okay? So I've always gone with that and said, hey, it's their money. I'm allowed to collect it and do what I love. I have to pay it back, okay? So am I proud of that? No, did I work really hard for this money? Yes. Um, but if it's by law, I have to give it back, then I would rather do it with a smiling face than be resentful. Um, let's see. Uh, every time I pull up on this, it tends to jump. So I'm sorry. Do you know more about the home op office deduction part? Um, there's really nothing else. It's just how much is your square footage of your room? Um, they'll figure out the number on that. And do you rent any storage to store your stuff? Do you also use your garage? Figure out what the square footage is. Anything that you, okay, you know where I used to store before this place? Do you know where I used to store all of my shipping? Besides the backstock for garage, I stored it in all my cupboards in the kitchen. So I would claim my kitchen as well. So I'm like, no, my cupboards are filled with shipping products. I need that clothes. I can't run 
all the way outside and walk about 60 yards to go to this garage that rolls up. It's fantastic, it's great as a storage, but it's not, it's not for me to go back and forth a million times a day. It's far enough away that I can't do that all day. I need to be able to grab and go, and I didn't have enough room in my main room, so there you go. Any storage that is used for business, anything you store for business, figure out the square footage and write it off. Use the bathroom, write it off. All of it, do it, all of it, <laughs> go for it. What about your time when you do lives? No, I mean, I, I don't get paid for that. And this is what I try to remind people is when I get a helper, just randomly when I need them, when I get a helper and I sit with them and I'm, and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs and work on canvases while you're doing receipt input or whatever it might be that day. Or, hey, I need some extra hands for shipping. I'm not getting paid. No one's paying me hourly. The only money I make is when I make a sale. So this is why I'm very, ver uh, very verbal, very vocal about reminding people, like, I'm not trying to make you buy stuff from me. I'm trying to remind you that my time when I'm live, my time when I'm doing pop shop and I'm not selling a product on there, the time that I'm listing products to be bought, I'm not being paid for that. And I'm not looking for handouts and I'm not looking for anyone to feel sorry for me. I chose this route for my life and I'm okay with that. Until it doesn't work anymore, I'm gonna keep going. Um, I don't get paid for any of my time. Nobody's giving me a paycheck hourly, but I have to give someone else a paycheck hourly. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I have to pay somebody to come over and help a little bit here and there under the table. Greg's nieces will come over. I get them to do a couple things. My friend, she'll come over and she'll help with pop shop maybe. Um, I pay them or they'll be like, I don't know, just get me some good food. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. So you're not getting paid hourly. You have to remember that as a artist, as a creative. Um, that's why we price our stuff where we do because you need to be paid for all that time. The prep, the marketing, the announcing, the posting, the pictures, the editing the pictures, the editing the videos, just to get people excited for your product. And I always say this stuff because I feel like not enough creators are, are saying like, hey, you're paying Target to buy something you could buy from me. You're buying a blanket from them when you could design a blanket on my shop. Like, People at Target, they don't care. They bought all this stuff wholesale probably from somewhere else, you know? Like, remember me, I'm worth paying because I'm in the US, I'm a paying citizen, I'm paying my taxes, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and I'm living my dream, I'm loving life. Shouldn't I be making that money? So I'm very much like, I'm not trying to be rude and I'm not talking about myself. Shop from any small shop. Just think of them first before you go drop a bunch of money on Amazon for stuff somebody else is making and more handmade or whatever, you know, it's worth the extra money. That's what you're getting. You go to the gas station and you pay more for gas and it's the same gas you got a week ago for a dollar cheaper. So it's like that nothing, you're paying for handmade items in the US. And to me, there's so much magic to that. I know I go on my little tangents, but um, that's a great question. And thank you for asking about that. Um, no, I can't write off anything. I don't get paid for my lives. I don't get paid for my lunch breaks. I don't get paid for any of it. So my only income is when somebody proves that they purchased something. That's the only thing I can cl can claim. Um, I love the questions, you guys. You're fantastic. I know you talk about bills. Does it matter if it's under your name or not? For example, my husband has most under his name. Nope, doesn't matter as long as you can prove it. As long as like at the end of the day, I, I've been married. I've had my ex-husband put everything under his name. Um, I could still claim everything because one, I was married, so we were a unit. When we filed, I would file as my own business. I didn't file under us um, together as a joint thing. Um, so usually you'll set that up with your tax person if you're married and you'll be like, hey, this business is my own. I don't want him involved. But they're not, like I said, they don't know anything unless they come and ask you. I don't know the odds of it, I have no idea. Um, but I know that if you just claim stuff, your tax person isn't like whose name is on it, who paid for it, that doesn't matter. Um, especially if you have like a joint bank account, it definitely won't matter. But this is why it is good to set up a business account. And just on a side note, DBA means doing business as. So if you want the name Curiously Abigail and you want it to hold and you want it to stick and you want it to be legally allowed, okay? At this point, nobody cares, right? Everyone starts a business and has a name. I do it, everybody does it. 
Um, but if you want it to hold up in court or like somebody else starts a name with the same name as you and they go and get it, DBA in California. Anyone can be curiously Abigail in any state, but once somebody gets that name under that in that state, they own the rights to it. So a DBA is great. It holds up for four years. Um, it is a business write-off. You can pay $64 to go to the newspaper and have them do your DBA. You can go to your city, get the DBA name. Um, it has to run in a paper, I think, three times before it officially becomes yours. Um, there's this whole process to it. I've done it several times and found out it doesn't matter. Never mattered. The only thing that matters is if you want to open a bank account, you have to have your DBA and your business license. Seller's permit, I don't think is needed to open a bank account, just a business license and DBA. Um, to get it to say your name on checks, to get it your name on business cards. It feels fancy, it is no different. I have never gone back to it because I just put my name on everything. I'm a sole proprietor. At the end of the day, I know I'm Critterosity, but I can't write Critterosity on my, business, my bank card. I can't write Critterosity on a check. If someone wants to buy out the name, go for it. I don't really care. If I gotta change it, I gotta change it. It's no big deal. But um, I, I'm just not doing business as Critterosity. So a lot of people are like, I gotta get a DBA. I gotta open this, I gotta do that. And I'm like, you don't need a separate bank account, but if you really feel like you need a business one to feel better and separate things, just know you're going to need a DBA to use that business name, or you just open a, a checking account, a second checking account under your name. You're allowed to have more than one checking account. That's no big deal. Um, just know there's fees when you don't usually like meet a requirement of your bank. If you don't have like X amount of money in there, they're gonna charge you every month if you're under that. So you don't have to open a business name, checking account, blah, blah, blah. You can literally just get a second checking account under your real name and be like, that's my business one and this is my personal one. So I don't know if that's TMI, um, too much information. <laughs> It should be okay. We filed together, but are considered one unit. So there you go. Astrid and Thor do not tape. And that's what I do, but now, but I know how to calculate it better. Okay, so there you go. So you can keep things separate or you can put them together. All right, let's finish up. I shared with you guys kind of my page of how I group things. And the last thing I was gonna say is on your final day, get yourself totals, a total page. So I'm gonna show you guys an example. Sorry, let me flip this around. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so I'm gonna brighten this. Oh, that's me talking, that's not brightness. This is brightness, not so bright that it was brightness. Okay, so what I do is I get all my income and I create where all my income comes in, anywhere I've made money, okay? Even if they don't care, it's just for me and if they really need a breakdown or like, oh, that can't go there, then they knock it from the price. Let's say I made 5,000, 50,000, that'd be nice. Let's say I made 5,000 on my subscription platform. I made 3,000 on Shopify. PayPal gave me a 1099 saying I got $50. Pop Shop Live said that I made $600 and my tips, somebody sent me $50. Okay, what I do is I get all those totals from the other page, remember this page? Um, I get all the totals of my deductions and put them here and I itemize still, even in there. I'll go, oh, I can hear myself, sorry. Um, supplies, like I said, supplies are just generic. It's just one total number. You need to round up or down. They don't want pennies. They don't want nickels. They don't want that. They want flat numbers. So if you have a total that comes out to 3,000, uh, 26.18, you would round down because it's under 50 cents. So the total I write in is 3026. They don't work in pennies, nickels, dimes. They work in solid numbers. Okay, so I go to shipping. And because shipping, I have quite a few different things that I like to keep track of. For my peace of mind, I title it shipping. And then I do USPS. I'm just going to keep it lowercase, sorry. I do pirate ship. Remember I told you I have three things I do for each one. And then I have supplies, shipping supplies, not just generic supplies, but shipping. All right, then I get my totals for my other page. I would go to my totals. I'd go to the, sorry, I'd go to the top and I'd be like, and I'd be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, pirate ship 
or USPS, $879.69. Well, I'm gonna round up because it's over 50 cents. So we're gonna call that 878. So I'm gonna plug some fake numbers now. Let's call that $1,000 I did in shipping on Pirate Ship. And my other page says that's shipping supplies. I did $50,000. That's right, $50,000 in supplies. <laughs> Okay, we'll change it to 5,000 just because 50,000 keeps coming up. All right, and then once I write in those ones from the other page, that's more for me. Maybe your person needs a breakdown. I don't know. They never do. I need to add those three together to get my total shipping for them. If you don't know how to do it, you can do equals the sum, all capital, equals the sum, parenthesis, and then you can just drag it and then hit the enter button. Boom. And they'll know that in shipping, if that's a category for them that they need exact, you've got your total. But you also can show them how you got that total. A lot of them want to go type on their fancy calculators and make sure you did it right. With the Excel spreadsheets and the Gmail spreadsheets like I have, this does it for you. So like that's why I love it. I just love to drag and drop. So let's do it for my income. I say equals caps lock sum parenthesis, drag it, get all your totals, and boom, it said it was $8,700, okay? So if you double click on it, you can see that it selected all of those when you did your um, calculation. So that is what I do for every single one. For utilities, I'd say spectrum, blah, 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 blah. And I do that same like list of all my totals and then give the one grand total of that section together. So I break it into three. I get the name of whatever's that category, anything that fits in that category, and then that. So supplies would be like my miscellaneous ones, utilities, uh, my phone bill total, my other utilities is gas, my other utilities is water, my other utilities that they charge me for is electricity, okay? Um, Stephanie, you can go back and rewatch. We're just about done. I'm going to be wrapping it up here at seven o'clock. Um, but I promise it's, it's a lot right now because you're jumping in. So events, booth fees, travel fees, whatever. Maybe you want to put travel in its own thing. This is just what I do. I generalize the, the category. Then I put in the things that fall in that category. I get all my totals rounded up or rounded down, depending if it's over 50 cents or under. And then the last one is the grand total of all those things. And you know what she did today? She said, oh, one of your, one of your like utilities technically could go under, you know, I'm just making this up because I can't remember what it was. She was like, one of your utilities can be considered food. I'm going to move that one down here. I'm going to cross that out. And I printed these out on paper so she could white out and do whatever adjustments she needed. But I had this beautiful page printed for her where she could go through my totals and figure everything out. So the more broken down, yes, it takes time. Hello, welcome to life. <laughs> you don't want to pay a bookkeeper? That's fine, but you're going to be the one doing it. Um, I took all the totals I got from my page of all my receipts. And then once I got the totals... I totaled those little chunks together and came up with one grand total. So when she's like, how much is all your shipping? I don't care the breakdown, just what's the shipping? Boom, $6,878 if that's what it is. So just know all they care about is the final number. I care about knowing why I put it there. How did I get to that number? Here's all my answers right here. I grouped them into the things I thought they fell under. So again, utilities, on my receipts page, the phone bill is a, is just its own category. That way every month I can be like, oh, T-Mobile is gonna be 90 bucks a month to have my cell phone, my service, and I also get a second cell phone with it that I use for business, let's say, even though that's not the case. That's all phone, and I wanna just see a phone section on the re receipts page. However, when I give my totals, that would go under utilities and bills. So my totals page is grouping all those little squares I showed you guys at the beginning, all the different sections. I start to gather those, okay? Maybe you have one that says vendors and you list where you get your sticker person. You list this, you list that, you list that. Get all your totals, make sure they're all accounted for before you just say, okay, I think that's everything. I went back through my receipts and I highlighted the words 
or the totals or something, I highlighted them to know that, yes, it's accounted for on my totals page. So your tab should be your receipts. Another tab should be income. Where are you getting your money from? Maybe break it down monthly, what you've gotten from them. Um, and then your third page is your totals. That includes your income and your deductible totals. No pennies, no 10 cents, no five cents, just round it up or round it down, okay? You need your, um, so always round to the nearest dollar. Include fees from companies, that includes credit card companies. Um, every time you swipe for Venmo and you're using Venmo business, they're taking a fee. You need to go in and dig where else is there fees? Where else am I being charged? And once you get it on like your first Excel spreadsheet or your first Google Doc spreadsheet, you have that forever. So I went into last year's and I looked at it and went, what am I missing? I forgot credit card fees for something. So I went back, I pulled all my credit card fees from somewhere that didn't show up on my analytics page, that my um, the dashboard that comes up for Shopify where I can see all my fees. I forgot to go to the page of extra fees that were credit card fees and then I pulled that one. So go through, write down every single time you find something new, put it on the board, get it on your tax board. Even challenge yourself to be like, no, there is no, I'll write it in later. Stop and be like, it takes seconds. Just open my Gmail, go to my Google Docs or open my Excel spreadsheet and just throw that new thing in there so I don't forget. I honestly keep my totals up on a page um, on my desktop. I just keep it up because every time I close it, I'm like, eh, I gotta open Google Drive and I gotta enter my email address and I gotta, no. If it's just open and set on my page to stay up, then when I get home and I'm like, you know what? Eh, I'm gonna eat some dinner and enter some receipts. I do it right then and there, you know? But now I'm in a place that I've had a business a while. I've grown through the pandemic. I do pay somebody to do my receipts for me. And it's just a friend and she just comes by once in a while and she just enters them. I have to do Chase with that person and I have to do PayPal, my bank statement and my PayPal statement. But just remember, it is literally deductibles. Anything you can think that you paid money to do to run your business to house your business, your car gets you places, whatever it is, is business, that's an expense. Don't be silly, don't be writing off all your, you know, eating out with friends and like running to the movies and that I had to go to Disneyland and get a pass. Like if it's not part of your business, don't do it because it will become a red flag. That's why I take the basics, the things I know for a fact, I had to do this and I can defend myself. I have witnesses, they went to dinner with me for a meeting. Those are the things I claim. Um, I had an event that day. I said that I have an event that day because it says I paid for my event space for that weekend. Clearly, I wasn't home. I needed to get breakfast for setup. Then I got lunch halfway through the day from a food truck and then as I was driving home, I picked up dinner. That's three meals in one day. And if you're doing a two day event where you're getting meals pretty much the whole weekend, write them all off. Don't be like, I don't wanna be a red flag. You're a red flag when you start claiming things that do not belong to be claimed, okay? So don't get shady. Keep it real, keep it genuine. Do the best you can possibly do because if something happened really rare that you were asked, you need to prove this, you know, if it ever came back to you, you could be like, um, I have enough notes. I remember where I was. I have my bank account. If I paid cash, I have the receipt. And it says that I did an event that day and that's why I kept the receipt for food. So yeah, you can't get me on that one. They can't come back and be like, you didn't really do that. They're just gonna be like, you're writing off way too much stuff. Like this is red flag century here. Um, also, if you're gonna make some big investments for your business, try to wait till the end of the year um, one, you won't be out and hurting for a really long time. Um, you'll be able to kind of use it as a deductible fairly quick, um, seeing as you're gonna pay your taxes between January 1st and April, well, right now it's April 18th. It used to be April 15th, I believe. Um, you're gonna only be out that money to not be a deductible for like four months. So for me, I made a very big investment. I bought two more totally old computers that I know will last me just a bit longer for when I need extra help. I sent one with a friend to her house and I was like, when you work for me, you use that one, okay? Like don't 
I don't want any of my info and searching stuff on your computer. I only want it on my computer. It was like 250 bucks for like a 2014 Mac just to like do stuff. I bought two extra ones. Um, I had a really good year and I was like, these are deductibles. And the year before I was told I didn't have enough deductibles. So I owed a lot more money. But this year I did so good that I owe nothing. And it's not because I'm being shady. They were just like, kind of broke even. I mean, like with how much you're claiming and how much you made, it kind of is a wash. So first year in 18 years, I don't owe anything. That doesn't mean I'm running a bad business. That doesn't mean I'm poor. That doesn't mean I'm being shady. It just means I spent about as much as I made throughout the entire year. Yes, I still have money in my bank. Yes, I'm still doing good business. I'm still selling things, but I'm also keeping the money generating going into the new year. I'm not paying taxes on this year right now. So the money I'm making hasn't been taxed yet. So you'll have this constant flow of money out, money in, money out, money in. Um, my 2022 money is in my bank until I pay out. So um, just remember, it looks like you have a good chunk of money, but you don't. You owe sales tax at some point in the year and you owe income tax. And I get a lot of people that think sales tax is income tax. It's not. They're two different things. You need to talk to a tax rep um, to find out where you stand, what you should do. Everyone gets told different things. There is no just black and white. There's no like, this is how you do it. You don't do it this way. Different people are going to tell you different things. I have dealt with several accountants. I've been in LLC. LLC is important when you own stuff. So if you own a car, you own a house, you own a condo, you own a boat, you could lose it if you got sued. Okay. That's what an LLC does is it separates your personal assets from the business. Uh, you're selling artwork at shows. I personally wouldn't be an LLC unless I own something. I don't own anything. <laughs> it's California. I own nothing. I've been given nothing by family. I've been on my own since I was 18. I've never gotten a dime from family except for maybe during a holiday. I maybe got sent 25 bucks or something, you know, but, um, no, like everything I have, I lease, I rent it, And honestly, it's the best because I have owned a house <laughs> and, it was more trouble to own a house than anything. So me personally, and I'm just speaking from my own personal experience, um, I don't have anything really to lose. If somebody came after me, there wouldn't be taking my assets from me. So I can be a sole proprietor. It's the best way to go for me. It's what I've chosen for my business. And S Corp, all those things, they all mean something different. And to be quite honest, a sole proprietor just means you're using your social security number instead of getting a tax ID number. The one last thing I didn't touch on real quick is resale. Um, you'll talk about a resale um, number. And if anyone's like, do you have a resale number? I know you're a small business. What does that mean? It means if you go to the store and you buy uh, the best thing I always use is a pad of paper. You buy a pad of paper from Michael's Arts and Crafts. You pay sales tax to Michael's Arts and Crafts. It's $10 plus California sales tax. You leave. You cut out a piece of paper, you draw on it, and you sell it, and you have to collect sales tax. They are now getting sales tax twice. They're getting sales tax from Michael's Arts and Crafts, and they're getting sales tax on every piece of paper from that page that you sell. So what's smart to do is talk to somebody about a resale number. Do I have one? No. Um, I've tried to apply. I was told one time, but again, it's people just guessing. Um, you don't qualify for a resale tax number. I'm like, I thought it was just something you get when you ask for it. Like, I didn't know. Um, I've been told to get one. I've been told I don't qualify. I had one for my store, but we were a store and we were an LLC. Now that I'm sole proprietor, I haven't been able to get a resale li license. Um, so it's a little confusing for me, but basically anytime you shop with major vendors, you're gonna see something that says taxes exempt. What's your resale number? And that's where you would type that in. So you don't have to pay sales tax. You'll pay sales tax on those stickers when you sell them and get sales tax from your customers. That's the only time you don't have to pay sales tax in California is when you obtain a resale um, license. That means you don't pay sales tax on it because you know you're just going to flip it around and you're going to sell it. Um, it would save you a lot of money and I am still going to encourage myself to look more into it. I kind of got lazy about it and just didn't care anymore. Um, but I'm just hoping somebody's like, I don't know who you were talking to. Anyone can apply and get one as long as you're doing business as like a, you got a business license and you're doing it. 
Um, I heard that the number is our permit number. Stephanie, oh, yes. So your seller's permit number, yes and no. Um, I've typed in my seller's permit number and it didn't work for resale. So I've had both situations come up, but you know what? Stephanie's giving a uh, sound advice here saying the number on your permit is your resale number. I've also heard that resale is actually something different. You used it twice at Michael's when I bought mirrors. There you go. So see, I don't know everything. I stated that in all of my things. I don't know everything. So try it. Try it. If you have your seller's permit, try that number when you're going to check out and be like, I, I, a small business, I have a resale number. Give them your seller's permit number. See if it works for you. I will certainly try that, Stephanie. I've never heard that. I heard that the resale license is a separate thing. And the one time I got it, we got a separate number. It was completely different than the number we got on our seller's permit when we had our store. So I don't know. Maybe that's because I was an LLC. Um, but I'll certainly look into that. Um, thank you so much for walking us through. Even knowing some of this, it helps me feel like I have my head on straight, plus always something to learn. Okay, before you guys leave, I know the numbers are jumping and people are gonna watch at different times. Before you leave, I will be posting on my Instagram, not, not TikTok because it disappears. There's no easy tag and link. Um, I'll be posting on Instagram the mornings I'm planning on doing tax prep. We're gonna do a meetup. It will be super fast. There's not going to be a lot of information. We're gonna just hype each other up and know you're not alone. And I'm gonna say, look guys, I'm doing my tax prep. If you come to the Zoom meeting, click on the link. Here's, here's your way to get in. Anyone can join. I'm gonna be working on my stuff today. And then at the end, I'm gonna say, I finished my blah, blah, blah today and count myself as accountable. Um, it's easier when it's in a planner. It's easier when you plan for it. If you can't get to it, you cross it off and you move it to the next day. That's what I do for all my stuff. Didn't get to this today. That's okay. It just wasn't meant for today. I move it to my next day and I just move it down. You're a human. Things come up. You end up running around all day. You end up doing other things. You can't do receipts every single month, the same day, same time. It happens. So I'll set up a zoom meeting the day I know I will put it on in the morning. I'll say, here's what time I'm going live. I'm gonna talk about what I'm working on. Think about what you're gonna eat. You pamper yourself. You love cookies, grab cookies, whatever makes you feel good while you're doing it. For me, I said, when I'm done with taxes today, I'm getting the restaurant that I want. And I did, I got it. I got a Caesar salad and feta fries. And my goodness, I regret nothing because I earned it. I, I did something that I'm not great at I got told I did a great job and that was it. So yes, I will create some templates for you guys before my next tax day. I'll put it up and then when you guys are ready to join, join. But remember, don't throw away receipts, keep them. I even keep ones that I'm gonna end up throwing away just so I can think about it. Like, did I need this? But if you're starting to confuse your receipts, let me tell you what I do in my car. I go to McDonald's and I'm like, I'd like a soda. I don't need this receipt. I crumple it so I know for a fact I don't need it and I put it in my side door. And like at the end of the week, I'll gather it all or if I pull you know, up to my garbage can or whatever, I'll throw it away in that moment or I take a bag out at the end of the week and throw it all in there, you know? Shred stuff if you need, whatever. Um, the ones I keep go in my wallet, my purse, my bag, my little cubby in the front of my, um, the front of my car, you know, like a little cutout cubby area. I'll slide it in there and be like, I keep the ones nice that I need. The ones I don't need, I crumple instantly and I, I have this automatic thing I do now. I don't know when I started doing it, but as soon as I get somewhere where I'm like, I don't need that crumple. If I go to a restaurant and I'm like, it's just Greg and I going out to eat, I crumple it just so I don't get it confused with other things. Even if you crumple it, but keep it, at least it's crumpled that it doesn't go in the business stuff. Um, another thing I did for quite a while when I was a face painter, all I did was drive. Um, I kept a mileage little clip it. Like I just made a little mileage clip it note and I was like starting at, you know, this mileage and then I'd drive to the event and I'd write down when I stopped, drive back, write down when I stopped again and I'd figure out the difference. Like I'd use my calculator and subtract, you know, my small number from the big number. And then I'd be like, okay, it took me 10 miles to get there and I drove right back home, so it's 10 miles back. Once you find out how long it was there. But if I go run errands and go like five different places, if you have a regular spot you normally go, figure out your mileage and keep that as a tab on the bottom as your mileage, like regular mileage, places you go all the time. So I know Art Supply Warehouse is like 15 miles for me. 
So I know 15 miles there, 15 miles back. But Eva, before you went home, you went to Chase Bank. Well, it's 15 miles there. Now I have to figure out to chase and back. So mileage, I get a little, I get a little wonky on. I don't really keep up with it really well, but I can certainly see where I go and what I've done through my receipts. So I can be like, okay, these are all the receipts I kept. How far is that McDonald's? I'll pull the receipt and I'll see the address and I'll type it into Google. I do, I spend a whole day on Google Maps and I'll just like type in where those receipts were. Where did I go? Was I at home? Did I come from somewhere else? Um, if I went to Disneyland for me, but I went to Chase Bank on the way home, I can't count to Disneyland. I just count my mileage from like Disney to the bank and the bank to my house. So you'll find a system that works, but make a mileage one for yourself too. You can keep gas receipts, but I'm telling you, it won't equal what, what you drive. Um, if you're not filling up every single time you go to an event, you'll forget about it and you won't even think about what was in your tank before you left. You don't know how much gas you used. So I always say mileage over gas receipts. They're gonna help you keep gas receipts because you're not gonna claim as much. But mileage is best, it's hard to keep up with, but a clipboard in your car is kind of a great way to like, that clipboard is like an obvious spot or you have something that dangles and holds like a little notepad and you can just write it in everywhere you go or I don't know, you'll figure out what works. But as long as you're doing it every two weeks and once a month for the big things where maybe you need a whole printout, then do that. But your totals page should literally just be totals for your accountant. Print that paper out, print out all your 1099s, make sense of your 1099s, because for me, my PayPal 1099 is technically in my Shopify 1099. It's just that it's a third party, so it claims it, but it's already claimed in the totals here because they're using the PayPal checkout button. So we had to do some research and be like, okay, wait, it's overlapping. It's the same money that you claim here. You're just getting a printout from them. But 1099s, they have to report. That is what your IRS, the IRS is seeing. So you have to make sure your 1099s are included. Medical, um, you usually get something for medical, like a form, kind of like a 1099 or a W-9. You get a form, I don't know the form name, but take in your medical stuff too. If you are covered with insurance, um, I get ma mailed mine every year for my coverage. And I take that in and it's just another thing saying that like I'm covered and I have my health care because um, the year before I moved and they didn't send it in time for my mail to be shifted and I forgot about it. You know, like we do, we forget how many places our addresses are. And then um, when I finally got the paperwork, they were like, okay, well, we can't even file your paperwork till you get the medical paperwork. So take in anything medical related. Um, I think that's pretty much everything for business. Personal, I can't say, you all have your own personal lives. This is not sound tax advice in the sense of like, I don't want you to hold me to my word. This is just what I do. And so far over 18 years of all different kinds of businesses, I'm here. <laughs> so when people are like, I'm so scared and they're just getting started, I'm like, you're not even on the radar. Nobody even cares. Like you're fine, just start. And just doing the best you can do and guessing is, is literally the best you can do. Honesty is, is the best thing. Don't be weird. Don't claim stuff you shouldn't. Don't try to write off things that were not yours, okay? Don't write things off that you got refunded or you returned. Just be honest and keep simple, clean layouts. And the more categories you give yourself, you have all the tabs at the bottom of your Excel forms and Google Docs use those and if you have to merge them at the end merge them but like for now enjoy all the tabs and label them very clearly and i do a google form for every single year i don't like go all my years are on one page i try to do every year as its own form and make sure you save all your forms um like i have a desktop one that's like taxes 2021 anything you're gonna give to the person that's doing your taxes Print it out and make a copy for yourself. Put it aside. Today, I walked in with five pieces of paper. Five. That's all I needed. And they had everything they needed. And the analytics pages on Square, on Big Cartel, on Etsy, I don't know. I, I'm not on all those platforms. But if there is an analytics page, try to find it. 1099, search for them in your email. 
Um, they usually email them now to you on top of mailing them, and we all know the mail is not always going to get to you. So um, definitely look in your emails and just search the word or the letters, the numbers 1099, all one word, okay? Um, that's it. It seems like everyone's good, and I don't have any more questions. Let's see. I'll look into it and let you know. I show them my certificate thing, they ask for it, and then it's that's it. So that might be it. How much do we withhold for income tax? Um, the going, I think it's between 10 to 15%, um, just generic. I've always been told to hold 20 to 30% for income tax. I don't know if there's a specific number, but I know that for me, I would have been totally safe today had I owed money because I don't touch my sales tax and I try to put away like 30% of my gross income. Um, I try. I try. It's really hard to do, but I try. Um, but if you have 10 to 15, remember that you can also break it into payments. So don't be like, you know, you owe $10,000. Stop. And, and by the way, I'm not even trying to gross people out by these big numbers. I'm just throwing out fake numbers. If you're just starting, you're probably going to owe like at most, like at most like $1,200, $1,500. Okay. That's, that's if you're doing a really bad job with deductibles. But, um, but yeah, if you're doing a really good job keeping track of everything, um, you'll be able to pretty much keep a totals page that you can keep updating as you're cleaning up your receipts. You can go back and change your totals. And that way you know like, okay, my profit's like $10,000, but my deductibles are 12,000. I'm spending more than I'm making. That's not really good business. Me, I was like a wash. It was very close to where she was like, e you don't, you're not going to owe this year. But um, I don't normally just share my tax information. I know that's not like a great thing, but I want small businesses to know like <clears throat> we're all in different parts of our journey. If you're just starting that, you should be excited because your taxes are going to be like, Phew. if you're on 8 million platforms, just know, keep track because you will forget like, wait, oh, there was Pop Shop Live too. Oh my gosh. And I'm on Patreon. Yeah. Don't forget that. Oh, and I'm on this. And the more money, more problems, right? <laughs> I should have more platforms, more problems, more things, more problems. New platforms don't have the dashboards, the analytics, the sales tax withholding. Etsy pays your sales tax. Big Cartel apparently pays your sales tax for you. Uh, nowhere I've ever dealt with has ever withheld and then paid for me. And to be quite honest, I, I don't know how they do it. I think that's phenomenal, but... I also am a person that's like, I'd rather just do it myself and know that I did it right. Because what if they have a glitch? And PayPal for two years in a row now has had glitches with my payments coming in. Um, they've they've sent amendments and redone it and been like, oh, don't use that 1099. Here's the new 1099. And I'm like, well, it's a good thing I didn't file already because you were off by like $2,000. So I wait till the last minute to pay. I will always pay the day or right before April, whatever they choose for that year to be. Because again, I'm not rushing to give the, I, I know you wanna pay it out quick, but I have had situations where the companies are wrong and they send me a new, a new updated piece of paperwork and I'm like, okay, one time I didn't get a 1099 until April 1st. Had I done my taxes in February, I would have never known about the 1099 because this was a few years back when they weren't just emailing it to you all easily. Um, you actually had to wait for it to come in the mail and I never got one. So I forgot about them and then it came through and I was like, what would have happened if I filed? And the lady said, oh, well, you can submit it and like we can readjust it, but there's a cost because it's out of their time. So there we go. Will Pop Shop be setting up a dashboard with analytics? Um, we've talked to them. I've talked to them. I've told them how Shopify does it. I've said, Hey, it's getting really tricky. You're asking me to download the CVS for me to divide all of my sales tax. I know it's getting dark in here. Hold on one second. Um, you know, they can only go as fast as their department can go. So I understand that. Um, I used to be with somebody that was a web designer and help with app design. Um, it's not something they can fix overnight, but it's something that they keep saying, they're going to try. Um, it's up there, I thought it was. Uh, I don't know, and you can definitely look at things, but as far as I know, there was no um, analytics page that was 
everything. Like when I go to Shopify and I go to last year's everything, it gives me every single breakdown my tax person needs. When I go to Pop Shop, it'll tell me what my shows were and my sales and my this and my that, and I can figure it out. But it's not like a button you just push and all your graphs are there and like deductibles and what your sales tax was for California and who took what and did this and did that. Um, it gets really tricky. So I basically had to do it all myself. Yes, I had the, the tools to do it, but I had to sit there and go, wait a minute, now I gotta divide out the California people with their sales tax, add up all of this, deduct that from there. Yeah, Pop Shop is still new. So I'm not mad at them. I'm just like, can we, can we hurry? Cause it's getting trickier. And to be able to go, here's the one page from Shopify you require. And my tax person goes, great, this is everything I need. It's amazing. The only hard part is my PayPal 1099 and my Shopify 1099 are technically the same income. The only thing that Shopify has that PayPal doesn't is when someone chooses to pay with a credit card. So it covers that too, but the breakdown was, hey, this is Pop Shop and credit cards. I'm sorry, PayPal and credit cards. And PayPal's like, here's all your PayPal payments. And it looks like I got two different incomes, but really that's part of that income. So like I said, there are things that will be different for everybody. I don't have the answer for everyone. I just can at least guide you into how to do your paperwork and stay on it. Set up date nights with yourself. Set it like me, yes, I'm a grown adult. I can have a glass of wine, okay? I'm not gonna be upset about it. I grab a glass of wine, I grab a couple cookies, and I sit and I eat and I bask and I go, I'm taking myself on a date. I have to do work I don't wanna do. I'm gonna release endorphins. I'm gonna feel good about this. And when I'm done with it, I like high five myself and I'm done with it super fast. Yes, I have help now. Didn't have help for years. So now that I can actually like, hey, can I take you out to dinner or a movie just to get you to come over and like do some receipts with me, you know, or like be my person that types it in and repeats it to me as I tell you. It's so much easier with two different people on it, especially when you get lazy, you don't have that second person going, wait, wait, did you say 1050 or 1015? 1050, okay, great. And then they do it and they're double checking for you. So you have a niece, you have a grandson, you have a cousin, you have a mom, you have a dad, you have a grandma, you have, you know, whatever that wants to do that for you to help you once every two weeks and make a little bit extra money or a nice date out, do it. And like I said, college students, uh, kids that are in school that are like fourth grade and up, you know, they like computer stuff. They want to help you out. You know, if you have kids, I'd like to think that they want to like learn this. You know, I used to sit there with my mom's checkbook and be like, okay, I'm ready to write the checks, you know? So depending on your kids, depending on what they like, or if it's punishment, <laughs> um, just remember, make sure it's somebody that you can, you know, is accountable and um, can enter things correctly and catch mistakes. Because if they are too young, they might not care. And I usually get like Greg's niece will do it once in a while. And she's like 16 years old. So I know that the odds are she's going to be pretty, she's actually really meticulous, meticulous. So she's very thorough and like, wait, 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 let's go back, you know, and it takes them a minute to find things on the page because it's big, long lists. And then if I'm like, okay, we're going, I found a receipt from last month. We're working on March, but we got to go back to February. You know, like, can you add a little space in there and type in, you know, they've got to break pages up or like copy and paste things and move things around. Um, Command Z um, is your friend. <laughs> undo or edit undo at the top. Those are your friends. Um, and then for sales tax, it's dashboard dash finances dash taxes, but I agree it could be better. See, this might be something totally new that I didn't see, so thank you so much. I'm gonna screenshot that. See, Eva's learning too as we go. This is why I wanted to have this meeting tonight because I'm getting answers on things that I don't know get updated. When I started, there was no dashboard really like really good and now they're just they keep growing and adding to their shipping and manifesting shipping and all that so i gotta go i'm gonna go live on instagram but i want to thank everybody for tuning in for asking questions for being bold for not sitting back and going i don't know i don't know i don't know this was your chance to ask so um if you didn't make the live you're watching this at a later date i do not come back and check the t uh, the chat board you can leave a comment and it will email me and flag me that someone left a comment on um, on my video. 
You can like, comment, and subscribe to um, my Critterosity channel. This is a rare one. I don't normally do, but I was feeling that weight from a lot of friends going, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know how to organize. It's called write every deductible down. Give each one a category. If it's something so similar, so ridiculously similar that you wouldn't even know the difference, um, it can go in the same category. But for peace of mind at the end of the day, I put things in separate categories and then give my totals under like a subcategory, you know, like all utilities and bills now are here. But on this page, they're broken down individually. Spectrum, Wi-Fi, da 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 Just think about every single thing you pay for and use it because you're spending it. You deserve to get that taken off of running a business. It's the cost of doing business. Um, but don't be all willy-nilly and think you're getting all that money back. It's just bringing your profit down as you add deductibles. So be honest, be smart, and I'll be posting when my Zoom meetings go um, with a link the mornings of and saying like, hey, at 11 o'clock, I'm going to check in with you guys. Um, if you don't do it till 7 o'clock at night, that's fine. I'm starting now. Anybody want to talk about something you've learned that you're feeling is helping you with this or like what do you do to make yourself feel better? Do you reward yourself after? Um, that way we can maybe powwow kind of before and have a little group meeting and then be like, okay, break. And then we check in with each other the next, you know, the next time. And we all maybe share in our stories like, thanks, just did my taxes. You know, like Critterosity fam, we're all working together. Um, I'll post those. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have had a wonderful night. I had a great night chit-chatting. And I wish you all the best. And remember, April 18th, last day to file. If you can't do it, don't be afraid to talk to an accountant and file an extension. Just know you might be on the phone for a while if you don't go into the accountant, uh, getting all the info for the extension. They have to file a form. So that takes time, cut time out of your day. Um, it has to get done to run a business. But if you're just starting, you might not even have to do it because you might not be making enough sales to 